Hi, it's Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress. Today, the weather's a little unpredictable, so I'm inside working on splicing some single braid. I'm gonna show you how to take this Dyneema straight out of the package and to make something that looks like this. So today we're talking about splicing, which is different than tying a knot. A knot is a way of taking a piece of line, bending and twisting it over itself in order to create a temporary adjustment to the line, like we have here with the bowlin. Uh, this is great for a lot of applications, but it creates friction points on the outside of the line. It's a little bit ugly. It's going to add some chafe and make it harder for that line to go around things and through things smoothly. So when we want a more permanent solution, uh, we're going to do something called a splice, which takes the rope and doubles it back on itself, creating this nice, smooth, more permanent solution. The splice I'm going to show you today is super, super simple. There's a lot of ways to splice rope. It always involves uh, braiding or weaving two pieces of rope together or braiding the same piece of rope back into itself. We're going to be using single braid today, which is sort of like a, a Chinese finger trap where it, when you push it together, it creates this nice hollow weave. And the nice thing about that is we can loop the rope right back into itself and the um, when you pull on it, it gets tighter and it holds itself together. So that's really a great way to splice a rope. Now, it's not enough to just put in one part of the rope into the other part of the rope. Um, once we have a long enough tail, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute, we're gonna have to secure this top area. We can do that by whipping, uh, which is something I've done right here. Um, that's one way to do it. You can also do it by stitching. Uh, actually taking thread and putting it through here, but we're gonna do something called a Mobius Brummel splice, where you just take the rope itself, weave it through itself, and then weave it through inside the uh, single brain to lock it together. So this is super simple. It does require that you have access to both sides of a piece of line. The nice thing about using a slippery line like Dyneema is even if you've got 50 feet, which is what we have here, or 100 feet, you can still use this uh, because it's just so slippery and easy to pull through and it's just so fast. There are other techniques where you create loops and put them through each other. The downside to those techniques is you can't wrap them around a thimble or a shackle like we've done here. So that's why we're using this technique today. We know what a splice is. Uh, we know kind of what the benefits are of using a splice over a knot. Some of the applications for using a splice uh, in this Dyneema specifically, you can use this as a dinghy painter or a dinghy anchor line. You can also use this for lifelines. A lot of people are using those to replace their lifelines. Some people even use it for the standing rigging, the uh, shrouds and the stays on their boat. We don't, um, but plenty of other people are these days. Um, this Dyneema is really inexpensive. This is about $20 on Amazon. I'll put a link down there. Uh, you'll see uh, this is something that we just recently bought. This has been on the boat for, I want to say a year and a half, maybe two years. So there's a little bit of color difference uh, that happens. It does loosen up a little bit. The easiest time to splice the line is when it's new like this. But again, working with Dyneema is really pleasant and really easy to do, even if the line is a little bit old. Another line that this would be good for is polypropylene, uh, which also floats and makes a great dinghy painter. Uh, it's super slippery and it doesn't hold knots very well. It's very easy for them to slip out. So that's a good application for splicing as well. The tools I'm going to use today are, I've got a hollow fid here, which is used to uh, make a hole in the line and also gives a place for the rope to go so that it feeds through. I'm going to use a ruler because there's a little bit of calculations that we need to do today. And I'm also going to use this wand. This is Brian Toss's splicing wand. This is kind of a neat tool. You can tighten or loosen it up like this. And the shaft goes into the handle here and that creates a loop of stainless wire here at the end. So it essentially gives you a really long needle to work. And we're gonna use this to thread the uh, working end of the line back into the standing end when we get to that point. This is also very useful for lots of different splicing techniques. Uh, Clark really likes using this wand a lot. It's also good for things like if you make curtains and you need to thread um, like a line through the pocket at the top 
uh, certain things like that when you would normally have to use like a tweezers or a safety pin to pull something through, this is a nice tool to have around. When you're splicing, a good number to remember is the number 72. You're going to take the diameter of the rope, multiply it by 72, and that's how long you need the tail to be to thread back through the rope. In this case, we've got a quarter inch Dyneema, and if you multiply quarter inch Dyneema by 72, you get 18. So we're going to need 18 inches um, as a tail. So I've got my ruler here. We're gonna measure, here's 12 plus six is 18. So that's how much tail we're gonna need. Put it through the shackle here that we have. We're gonna take our hollow fid. We're gonna make a hole about halfway through. Now there's 12 strands here, so technically we need six strands on either side. And we're gonna make a hole right through the rope. It's gonna be important not to catch any loose threads. You're gonna wanna keep the threads all nice and grouped together. Kind of helps if you do a little bit of this twisting action here, I found, and you can look through and see. Oh, see, I've got a little thread there. So let's do that again. And let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five strands on this side. Really want to get it perfect. Six and six. Okay, there we go. So we've got that. That's nice. I'm gonna take the working end, short end, put it through here. Again, this is why the hollow fid works well. You can push it through, thread it through really easily. Okay, so we're gonna pull the working end through the standing end, all the way up here. Then we're gonna take the standing end here, which I've whipped really nicely, and do the same thing through the working end. So again, I'm gonna take this, bisect this, open it up, use that sort of twisting motion, take the working end, slide it through. And we've got sort of a figure eight we've created here. So when we do a splice, usually you have to find some way to anchor the loop to itself. Some people will do this by whipping, which is what I've done here at the end, which is just wrapping thread around a lot of times. You can also do this by stitching. Sometimes people will put a stitch through back and forth to lock it, but this Mobius Brummel approach locks it together just by itself here. So the next thing we need to do is thread the working end back through the standing end. And that's where this wand really comes in handy. So just double checking, we've got our 18 inches here. And it's gonna have to get threaded through here. So I'm gonna start a little bit beyond where it needs to go. I'm gonna use my wand, tighten it up without the needle part sticking out. And just measure this out. It's gonna have to go through here, so I'm gonna start down about here. Use this to open it up a little bit. Loosen it. Stick the wand in. Again, that sort of twisting motion. And you kind of have to push it down, open it up as you go. Again, I'm sort of twisting this as I'm going through. I'm just gonna do that all the way up. Sort of twisting and pushing. That twisting really helps you detect if you've snagged something you shouldn't have. It's a little weird to do this the first time, but you'll get the hang of it. See, it's not going very smoothly, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. There we go. Working with Dyneema is kind of cool. It's got this slippery feel to it, especially when you're bunching it up like this. I don't know, it's kind of fun to play with. 
All right, we are almost there. All right, now I'm gonna stitch when I come out, if I come too close to where this final stitch is, it's gonna create a loop and make it easier to get out. So I'm gonna kind of go between here to here, the diameter of the rope. So I'm gonna come out right about there. I am no rigging expert, uh, but you know what? The way you become an expert is by practicing and doing stuff like this. So maybe you don't wanna do your own standing rigging right away, but you can certainly do your own dinghy painter or something like that. Okay, now we've got this uh, stainless steel needle. The wire pushed up, push this through it and slide that up. It's a little tricky sometimes. Just stuff it in there, pull it. And then I'm gonna lock it off. Nice and tight. It's really pulling it. And then, this is kind of the fun part, I get to pull it through. Again, that sort of twisty action helps. Pushing it ahead, making that wider. There we go, all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna loosen that up. That'll get the wire out, push it up. All right, so now we can pull this through. You can see how that locks it in. Now we're gonna pull this nice and tight to smooth it out. But first, because we don't want this to leave a lump in the line here, it'll look like a, a snake ate a mouse, right? It'll have a big lump in there. We're gonna taper this. So, we've got 12 strands here. This comes apart really easy. Again, this dyneme is really slippery. And you can just sort of eyeball this and sort of cut across it. I'm gonna be a little more precise. Cut each strand just a bit shorter than the rest. So here we go. So this will be our longest strand. I'll cut this one a little bit shorter than that. These are terrible scissors. Get yourself some better scissors. I'm gonna get myself some better scissors. Hold on a second. Okay. So you can see we've tapered this all down. Got some that are longer, some that are shorter. For the most part, it tapers off pretty well. Okay, and this is, again, sort of the fun part. Just pull this. See that tail going in? It disappears just about right. Very satisfying. And actually, I started that, you know, good, goodly amount farther down. I'm glad I did because I almost ran out there. This does take up some width here. All right, so that is our Mobius Brummel splice. There we go. Pretty cool. Now, again, mine is not perfect. I'm not an expert at this. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice to be good at it, and most of our rigging is pretty well set right now. I'm sure I'll get better at it uh, over the next few years. But that's what it looks like. There we go. Now, I may go ahead and whip this just for fun uh, and to make it extra secure, because this is a slippery line, but you don't have to. It's gonna stay pretty well. There we go. 
So let's just review the process real quick. So we're gonna have our shackle here. We're gonna put our line through. We've got our standing end. The standing end is gonna go through the working end. And then the working end is gonna come back and go through the standing end. And that's gonna make a shape that looks like this. Here's the Mobius Brummel. Then we're gonna take the working end and put it back inside of the standing end. So we're left with something that looks like this. And that is the Mobius Brummel splice. Again, there are lots of ways to do splices. This might not be the best application for what you want to do. There's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, if you want to learn all about knots and splices and all kinds of things, check out this book by Brian Toss. Uh, we just got a new copy because our old copy is literally falling apart and the pages are coming out. Um, so I'll put a link to this down below in the description. I'll put a link to the Dyneema that we get at a good price and to the Brian Toss, again, the same guy who wrote the book, his splicing one here. So. Hope you learned something. If you've got tips about how to splice, uh, maybe you see something that I'm doing that's a little more clumsy and you've got a tip for how to do that, leave it in the comments below. We'll keep the conversation going. And as always, uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, check us out on Patreon. Thank you everybody who supports us, watches our video, and subscribes. Talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.